Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about how to secure your network so that your users can only use DNS servers that you have specifically whitelisted and they can't use any other DNS servers. Why would we want to do this? Basically, if you're using any sort of malware filtering, such as Pi-hole or content filtering for adult content, things of that nature, you want to, your, to basically steer your users to specific DNS servers that are providing that filtering. So for instance, we've got a Pi-hole here, and Pi-hole does malware filtering and all sorts of other types of filtering. But if I'm a savvy user, and I've received the IP address of a Pi-hole in my DHCP lease, maybe I don't want to be filtered, so I know how to go in and manually set my device so that I'm not using the Pi Hole, I'm using 1.1.1.1 or 9.9.9.9 or one of the other, you know, thousands of DNS servers out there on the internet. So what we're gonna do today is utilize firewall rules to say, hey, users, you can only use DNS from these devices and all other requests to DNS servers are gonna be dropped by the firewall. This way you can lock those users in and you can do that on a per VLAN basis, so maybe you don't have any sort of DNS filtering or, or you know, DNS server blocking on your internal LAN, uh, but you do have it on your guest network or like if you're running a school, you know, the student network, something like that. So let's talk about how to do that. And we're gonna do it in both EdgeOS and Unify. Uh, they're very similar, but there are, you know, different, you know, places you have to click on to get to these settings. So here we are in Edge OS. We're going to start here. This is my own personal Edge Router 4. It's sitting right here. And we're first going to go over to Services, and then we're going to check out my DHCP server settings. So we're going to say uh, View Details on my main DHCP server. We can see that I'm in 192.168.200.0. And I'm passing out two DNS servers. I'm passing out 192.168.200.201, which is uh, actually this Pi hole that's sitting right back here. And then we've got 192.168.200.10, which is the Pi hole that I have running in Docker on my Synology NAS. Uh, I have a third one here. This is a third Pi hole. This is 192.168.200.206. I'm just using this for testing, and I just did a video on you know how to set up and install Pi hole and uh, that video, details on that video coming soon. Okay, so we made sure now that our clients are only getting these specific IP addresses through DHCP. You also wanna make sure that any devices that you have statically set in your network, such as the edge router itself, or any servers that might be statically set, anything like that, you have to manually set the whitelisted or allowed DNS servers for those devices' DNS server settings as well, since they're not getting it through DHCP. Okay, so we're gonna close this down. And next we're gonna click on the firewall slash NAT tab. Now, in the firewall NAT, we're gonna click on firewall slash NAT groups. And I have two groups set up in here. I have my RFC 1918 ranges. These are basically, it's just a group where I can specify any private LAN IP address range. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna say config. And so basically this group is my RFC 1918 ranges. It includes 192.168 anything dot anything, 172.16 anything dot anything, and then 10 dot anything, right? So basically all of sort of the private IP address spaces that are set aside for private LANs. Okay, so we're gonna close that out. We have that's one group, and our second group is our DNS servers. These are DNS servers that I want to specifically whitelist. And why do I have them in a group? It's so that wherever I'm using this group in my firewall rules, I can just make changes to the group and then my firewall rules will all update accordingly. I don't have to go through all of my firewall rules and set up each you know, DNS server individually. If I make a change and maybe I put in a new pie hole that has a different IP address, all I have to do is update this group and it sort of propagates out to the rest of my firewall rules. So in this group, I have 201, that's the one sitting back here. I've got 10, which is my Synology NAS, and I've got 206, which is this pie hole sitting right here. Okay, so that group is done. And now we're gonna click on our firewall policies tab. And you can see I've got a lot of groups here. The one that I wanna mainly deal with, or I should say the two that I wanna mainly deal with, are my LAN in, so my main LAN group, so my main LAN network is 192.168.200.0, all traffic coming in to the firewall from that LAN, it's called LAN in, 
And then we're also gonna do my IoT network. My IoT network's a little bit more secure. Not only am I only allowing specific DNS servers, I'm also blocking any traffic from the IoT network into my main LAN, right? Because I don't want those IoT devices, the Roku and the, you know, the smart plugs or whatever you happen to have in an IoT network, I don't want those devices to have any access to my main secure LAN whatsoever. But I do want them to be able to utilize the pie holes that exist in my main secure LAN. So we'll show you how to do that as well. But first, let's take a look at LAN in. We're gonna say actions, edit rule set. So for interfaces, we wanna make sure that this is whatever you know, interface, uh, it's eth1 dot the VLAN ID. In this case, there's no VLAN, this is just my main LAN, so it's just eth1. Direction is inbound traffic, so from the LAN into the edge router. And then for the rules, we're gonna allow establish related first, that's always sort of the first rule that I put in place. Then we have allow my DNS server. So this is the rule where I'm saying, hey, all of the clients in this network can only use the DNS servers I specified in that DNS group that I already created. So let's take a look at that rule. We're going to allow my DNS services the description. We're going to accept both TCP and UDP traffic where the destination is port 53 on any of my DNS servers in that address group. Okay, so easy, easy rule. That's all there is to it. Next, we have allow pie hole access to DNS. So while I am blocking all of my clients from using any other DNS server, well, my pie holes have to forward, right? So they use Cloudflare's DNS 1.1.1.1 so that if, you know, if a client does a look up to the pie hole and the pie hole doesn't know how to resolve www.google.com, this pie hole has to be able to get out and resolve that name. So I have to specifically allow my pie hole, my pie holes or whatever DNS servers to get out to the internet to do their own lookups. So that's a special rule in itself. I'm calling this allow pie hole access to DNS. So let's take a look at that rule. So for this one, we are going to accept both TCP and UDP where the source is my DNS servers. So the source is just the IP addresses of my pie holes. And then the destination is anything on port 53. Okay, so basically saying pie holes have full access to DNS, whatever DNS server they wanna look up. I could also lock it down so that I say they're only allowed to look up 1.1.1.1 on port 53 and sort of secure that down a little bit tighter, but I'm not, uh, I don't have that in place. Okay, so that's rule number two. The third rule we wanna do is for the clients that are doing lookups to the pie holes, if they're savvy and they say, hey, haha, I'm gonna get around Chris's firewall rules and I'm gonna put in my own DNS server, uh-uh, no you aren't. This is where I'm gonna block you. So we're gonna block all other DNS servers. Let's take a look at that rule. In this case, we're going to drop both TCP and UDP where the destination is port 53. Okay, so any other DNS server. Now these rules are processed in order. So we're basically saying, allow my DNS servers to be used by any other networks allow Pi-hole access to access any DNS servers that it wants to access, and then we're blocking my client's requests to any anything that's not the Pi-holes, we're blocking DNS servers that aren't specifically the ones I've whitelisted. Hopefully all that makes sense. All right, so let's move on to and take a quick look at the IDIoT in network. This is for my IoT devices. It's very similar with a couple of changes. So we start with allow establish related. Whoops, I don't wanna actually move them around. Then we have allow pie hole DNS. So that's the same thing where we're saying allow accept traffic TCP and UDP where the destination is my DNS servers on port 53. Then we're gonna drop non pie hole DNS. So that's the same rule that we created before where we're gonna drop anything where the destination is port 53 since we've already processed out the ones that did successfully match. Anything else that's left over since these rules are processed in order the DNS stuff is gonna get dropped. And then since this is my secure network, uh, I'm allowing people to go through, since it, the rules again are processed in order, you can go through from my IoT network to my secure LAN just on port 53 for these DNS servers. That's it. The last rule in this uh, rule set is saying drop 
traffic to the RFC 1918 ranges, right? So any other traffic that I haven't specifically allowed through, we're just gonna drop. So my IoT stuff cannot get through to my secure LAN. Notice also that in this rule set, I don't have to specifically allow my pie holes to see out to their the DNS servers they need to resolve to because these pie holes aren't in this network, right? They're in my main secure network. So I don't need that rule here. Okay, so let's test. Here I have NS lookup, and we're gonna say NS lookup, enter. And it says that it's going to use 192.168.200.201. All right, so let's do www.google.com. There we go, we got an answer. Okay, now we're gonna say, I think there's a command to change your server while you're in here. Is it server equals? No, it's not. Uh, so I'm just gonna cancel out. We'll say NS lookup dash 192.168.200.10. Okay, one of my other, this is the Synology NAS pie hole. www.google.com. Actually, I'll use a different one. Uh, Bing.com. Boom, there we go. So we got an answer. Now, let's do NS lookup 1. Dot, uh, dash 1.1.1.1. One dot one dot one dot one. Okay, so the server's unknown. Let's do www.slash.org. And now we're not getting lookups. It's not resolving. DNS request timed out. But again, if I go to uh, my third one, 182.168.200.206, and I do www.slash.org, boom, immediately comes back. Okay, so now what we've successfully done is we're saying, Pieholes can do lookups wherever. I can do lookups. My clients can do lookups to the pieholes that I've specified. But any other DNS server that we try, we're going to block those requests. Okay, and that looks like it's working just fine. Now, I also said that we're going to do this in Unify. So let's flip over now. We're going to look at my R2 Dream 2, my little UDM that I've got sitting back here. And in order to make these same changes, you want to come to Internet Security and then click on firewall. Now, none of this stuff is gonna be here. You're basically just gonna have these rules to begin with. So we first wanna add a couple of groups. So we're gonna say create new group, and then we can look at these groups that I created, uh, DNS servers that we're allowing from this device, okay? In this case, I'm gonna allow 1.1.1.1, 9.9.9.9, .9 and the IP address of the UDM, again, you pick whichever DNS servers you want. In this case, you know, the first example, I was only using the DNS server IP addresses of my pie holes. In this case, I'm using a couple of like, you know, I'm using 9.9.9.9 and 1.1.1.1. In a secure DNS environment, those are not the addresses that you would use. You would use like a pie hole or some other type of DNS content filtering, such as open DNS or something like that rather than, you know, a publicly available IP, but this is just to set the example. This is the group of IPs that I'm allowing. Okay, so we're gonna close that. You can also set a port group in Unify. So I created a port group for port 53 as well. So if we look at this port group, uh, it's basically, that's all there is to it. Just one port, port 53, and we're calling the port group DNS. So now I have an address group with my whitelisted DNS servers, and I have a port group for TCP and UDP port 53. Actually, it's just port 53. You specify TCP UDP later. So now let's look at the rules that I have set up. So my first rule is allow DNS servers. Okay, so we're going to edit that rule. And so for LAN in, we're going to, the description is allow DNS servers. We're going to accept both TCP and UDP. where the source is any, any, so any from any location, and the destination is going to be address port group DNS servers on port group DNS. Okay, so basically saying we're going to allow DNS lookups to happen on my whitelisted DNS servers in this group on the ports in the DNS port group, which is just port 53. That's it, that's all there is for that rule. Now, the next rule, we have to allow our DNS servers to be able to see out and resolve their names, so like so that they're you know have the ability to do their own lookup. So let's take a look at that rule. So this rule is called allow DNS servers out. Again, applied to LAN in. We're going to accept traffic where the source is my address port group 
DNS servers on port DNS, right? So again, we're allowing DNS lookups from my devices that I specify, my whitelisted DNS servers, out to any IP address but port group DNS, which is port 53, okay? So that's the second rule. Third rule is block all other DNS servers. So let's look at this rule. We're going to say for LAN in, description block DNS servers. We're going to drop as the action. Protocol is TCP and UDP. And then we're going to drop any source where the destination is any IP address in my DNS port group, which is port 53, right? So basically, again, saying if you try to make a DNS lookup to anything that I haven't specifically whitelisted earlier in the rule set, block it and just drop that traffic. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and test that one as well. Let me connect up to that network. Okay, so I have connected to the wireless coming off of my UDM, and we're gonna bring up Net Analyzer, and I'm gonna run a DNS test. So this is an A record DNS test out to www.google.com, and for DNS server, I'm gonna use 1.1.1.1, which was one of my whitelisted DNS servers, and we're gonna say start, and there we go, status, no error. Okay, so let's go back. We're gonna try my other DNS server that I whitelisted, which is 9.9.9.9. .9 Start, no error, that's good. And then finally, let's try another, oops, another public DNS server that I haven't specifically whitelisted. Let's try 4.2.2.2. Start, and we're gonna time out. Okay, so this is definitely not gonna work. It's gonna eventually come up with an error. And uh, that just means that we are blocked. Okay, so, yep, there it is, error. And that's all there is to it. All right, well, I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions about this type of setup, let me know down in the comments below. If you think I did anything incorrectly or think that I could have done something better, also put those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and critiques on this type of DNS secure setup. All right, my name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.